Party Secretary of Tianjin, Shango Li, Mayor of Tianjin, Wang Xing Wo, His Excellency President Paul Kagama of Rwanda, His Excellency Prime Minister Raja Parvez Ashraf of Pakistan, Her Excellency Prime Minister Helle Thorning Smith of Denmark, His Excellency Prime Minister Andreas Kubilius of Lithuania, His Excellency Prime Minister Vadis Dombrovskis of Latvia. Ministers, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends of the World Economic Forum. It is my great honor to welcome you to the annual meeting of New Champions 2012. Inaugurated in 2007, this annual meeting has since become the foremost global business and multi-stakeholder gathering in Asia, with more than 2,000 participants from 86 countries, including 1,000 business leaders, 140 ministers and head of states and governments, 175 young global leaders, global shapers, 120 leading women leaders, key leaders from civil society, and social entrepreneurs. In this respect, the summer that was in China, in terms of size, has reached the dimension of our winter Davos. After six years, we are proud that this annual meeting is no longer the little sister, but rather the true twin sister of Winter Davos. The theme of this year's meeting is creating the future economy. Our discussions over the next two days will focus on addressing the opportunities and challenges posed by a world that no numbers more than 7 billion people, and how to ensure that the right values, incentives, and models are in place to deliver the best possible outcomes for global prosperity, national competitiveness, and entrepreneurial growth for future generations. In this respect, China, as the world's second largest economy, is the ideal host given its dynamic, fast-growing economy, which is undergoing rapid transformation. And few places represent this forward-looking mentality better than China's sixth largest, most populous city, Tianjin. The city has the highest per capita GDP in China and is clearly cutting edge in terms of demonstrating China's future potential. Tianjin has become a magnet for investment, particularly for advanced industries, finance, and technology. Nearly two-thirds of Fortune 500 companies have no offices here in Tianjin. We are proud to continue this great collaboration with Tianjin, and on that note, I'm very honored to introduce the mayor of Tianjin, Wang Xing Wu. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Annual meeting of new champions being granted late today in Tianjin. Once again, people throughout the world are focusing their attentions on Tianjin. First of all, on behalf of Mr. Zhang Gaoli, the CPC Political Bureau member, Party Secretary of Tianjin Municipality, and on behalf of municipal government and uh, 13 million people of Tianjin, I'd like to extend my warmest welcome to the opening of the forum. And I'd like to extend my sincere uh, welcome to all of the distinguished guests and friends.
Under the leadership of Professor Schwab, the Summer Growers Forum paid close attention to the development of growth enterprises. It has become a very important platform for the global new campaigns to explore innovation, plan for development, share experience, and seeking excellence. They are contributing positively to the healthy economic development in the world. Tianjin as the host city has been cooperating very effectively with World Economic Forum. And because of some of Davos, Tianjin is walking towards the world stage. Here, I'd like to pay highest tribute to Professor Schwab. And also, I'd like to sincerely thank different government departments and the World Economic Forum Executive Board, as well as all of the participants for your vigorous support. At present, the world economy is undergoing profound changes with challenges and opportunities coexisting. The global financial crisis, the imbalanced growth, and the lack of momentum of growth, climate change, energy and food security, regional conflicts, and many other factors are still facing us. And at the same time, the international community is faced with increasingly more and more new topics and issues. With the innovation and breakthrough in science and technology, we are faced with a new round of industrial revolution, which will have a deep impact on the structure and pattern of world economic growth. In this annual meeting, the theme is creating the future economy. We will explore the new business model and promoting sustainable growth and high quality growth. This is consistent with the common aspiration in the whole world. Therefore, it will play a very important role for the future development in the world. In the process of world economic restructuring and the transformation, China sticks to the principle of the scientific development and has been accelerating the transformation of the economic development model. And we have been exploring the all-around and coordinated sustainable development. In my opinion, in the first three decades of this century, scientific and technological innovation, urbanization, and improving ecological environment are three major events and uh, issues affecting China's development. Uh, they will bring great driving force for domestic demand and uh, create uh, new dynamics for the innovation in the society and uh, vigorously promote the improvement of institutional arrangements and international cooperation and social transformation. It will become a very important focus for China's economic upgrading and transformation. At the same time, we will bring new opportunities for world economic development. Tianjin is a city of great vitality. It is one of the new champion cities. We have been making efforts in further opening up and developing the Beihai New Area, promoting regional economic growth, accelerating scientific and technological innovation, promoting organic economic growth, accelerating the development and improvement of ecological environment, improving people's living standards. In the past six years, the average annual growth rate exceeds 16 percent for the city, and we are among the best in energy conservation and emission reduction. So Tianjin is moving ahead along the path of the scientific development. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, innovation guides development. Wisdom creates legends. Creating future economy in this regard, we have a severe task to accomplish. This will test the sincerity of the international community in enhancing cooperation. It will also test our wisdom to cope with this task. Let's join hands and cooperate closely with each other to meet these common challenges and build a more beautiful future for the mankind. In conclusion, I wish 2012 Summer Davos Forum a complete success. I wish all of the distinguished guests a happy stay in Tianjin. Thank you.
I now have the great honor to welcome His Excellency Premier Wen Jiabao of the People's Republic of China and Professor Klaus Schwab, Founder and Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum. Your Excellency, Premier Wen Chabao, Party Secretary, Zhong Goling, Mayor, Wang Xingbo, distinguished heads of state, heads of government, members of government. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, we are assembled here at a very special moment in global economic history. The world has to master the deepest crisis we have experienced in generations. After nearly five years characterized by major appeals, many feel like we are experiences a continued disintegration of the global system and a downward spiral of negative consequences. It's only global cooperation and global solidarity which will allow us to return to a path of harmonious growth. Today, in our highly interconnected and interdependent world, no country, regardless its size, can determine its fate anymore alone. We must urgently bring our global horrors in order. We call on the international community to deliver on the promises made to address the roots of the present unacceptable global situation particularly looking at rising unemployment levels and the lack of job opportunities for the young generation. The challenge is that we have to confront all of these issues while still burdened by the sins of our past. We are overleveraged in many developed countries, not only in Europe. We have neglected in many countries to invest into the future. We have a lack of global regulations, particularly within the banking community, and we are in danger of completely losing in many countries around the world the confidence and the trust of the future generations. Clearly, we need to reboot the economy through intelligent stimulus measures by investing into the future, supporting innovation, encouraging entrepreneurial activities, establishing loan facilities and support mechanisms for small and medium-sized enterprise, just to name a few. The World Economic Forum stands for global citizenship. This means that our ultimate responsibility is not solely to generate again global growth, but rather to ensure that an entrepreneurial spirit is harnessed to create an environmentally and socially more sustainable future. Looking out at the community here in this room, I see 2,000 new champions, all ready to create the new economy, 
ready to create jobs for the 21st century, ready to innovate and be responsible in using natural and above all human resources. This meeting is unique, unique as it brings together all stakeholders of society, our traditional members, the world's foremost global companies, our global growth companies, young global leaders, global shapers, social entrepreneurs, young scientists, technology pioneers. Overall, an outstanding community of entrepreneurial talent. And today, the most competitive countries are those which combine a strong entrepreneurial force with a strong political vision and statesmanship. And for this reason, it's a great honor, privilege, and my personal pleasure to welcome a true statesman, His Excellency Wen Chabao, Premier of the People's Republic of China. Premier Wen is the patron of the Summer Davos, as it is called. And it is now the sixth time that we have the pleasure of welcoming him for the opening session. Mr. Premier, you have always addressed and inspired and encouraged us over the last years. And I want to use this opportunity to thank you on behalf of the World Economic Forum and of all of us gathered here for your great support, your partnership, and your friendship which is at the roots of making this annual meeting a true success. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Excellency Premier Wen Chabao. Professor Klaus Schwab, Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to meet you, friends old and new here today. Let me first express warm congratulations on the opening of the sixth annual meeting of the new champions for the summer doubles and extend a sincere welcome to all the distinguished guests present. The Summer Davos Forum, inaugurated in China in 2007, has become a global forum with extensive influence. The theme of the forum for this year, creating the future economy, is highly relevant and practical. It reflects your vision on sustainable development and meets the high expectation for a brighter future of the world economy. China has enjoyed fast economic development for over 30 years. During the past decade in particular, we firmly seized the strategic opportunities for development made hard and pioneering efforts and scored new historic achievements in economic and social development. From 2002 to 2011, China's GDP grew at an average annual rate of 10.7% and moved up from the sixth to the second place in the world. Our per capita GDP rose from 1,000 plus US dollars to 5,432 US dollars. 
China's foreign trade volume also climbed from the sixth to the second place in the world, and foreign exchange reserves exceeded three trillion U.S. dollars. China's industrial structure was upgraded. Its agriculture function was consolidated, and regional development became much more balanced. All-round progress was made in social programs, and people's livelihood significantly improved. We have withstood the test of many disasters, difficulties, and risks. In the recent five years in particular, we effectively tackled the huge impact of the international financial crisis and sustained steady and fast economic growth. We owe these achievements to the strength of reform and opening up, the persevering spirit of the Chinese nation, and our tireless efforts in exploring a path of scientific development and harmonious society. Here, I wish to share with you what we did and we, what we have learned in this course of our endeavors. We enhanced macro regulation to promote steady and fast economic growth. Fast growth and low fluctuation was the most salient feature of China's economic performance in the past decade. We gave full play to the basic role of the market in resource allocation. Exercise macro regulation in a scientific way acted quickly to correct market failures and prevented major fluctuations in the economy. After the international financial crisis broke out, we fully implemented a package plan making parallel efforts in expanding domestic demand and stabilizing external demand, increasing investment and stimulating consumption, reinvigorating industries and promoting technological innovation, boosting economic growth and improving people's livelihood, and overcoming current difficulties and pursuing long-term development. Thanks to these efforts, China was among the first to achieve an economic upturn, and what we did was also vital in promoting world economic recovery. Some people made accusations about China's package plan in this regard of facts, and they even said that we paid an undue price in this process. I want to make it clear here that it was exactly due to our resolute decision and scientific response that China was able to avoid factory closures, job losses, and return of migrant workers to their home villages. These stimulus measures helped us keep the good momentum of economic development, maintain social stability and harmony, and protect China's modernization process from major setbacks. Over the past several years, social wealth has increased, asset quality has improved, and our capacity to resist risks has enhanced. From 2009 to the end of 2011, we began construction of 21 million units of low-income urban housing and 11 million units have been basically completed. The operational mileage of railways increased by 13,500 kilometers. The mileage of highways was extended by 376,000 kilometers, including the 24,600 kilometers of expressways. Infrastructure facilities such as urban rail transport and a rural power grid were significantly improved. Over 7,000 large and small and medium-sized and key small aging reservoirs were reinforced. We extended access to potable water to many more rural people. A large number of community facilities providing medical, health, education, and cultural services were established. A new Wenchuan was built 
An all-round progress was made in economic and social development of the disaster-stricken areas. Meanwhile, we had fiscal and financial risks under control. Our budget deficit and outstanding government debt in 2011 were 1.8% and 15.28% of the GDP, both lower than their 2000 levels of 2.57% and 16.07%. The ratio of non-performing loans in the banking sector went down from 15.2% at the end of 2003 to 1.8% in 2011. We obtained a true picture of local government debts. The scale of local government debts in the past two years was on the whole stable and the risks were basically under control. We improved the economic structure to raise the quality and efficiency of economic development. A shift from fast growth to sound growth was a fundamental change in the priorities of China's development in the past decade. We took strategic adjustment of the economic structure as the main task of shifting the growth model and raised the quality, expanded the scope and bolstered the momentum of development. To balance the development of domestic and external demand, we rolled out a number of policies and measures to boost domestic demand. As a result, our current account surplus as a percentage of GDP came down to 2.8%. The contribution of final consumption to economic growth rose from 43.9% to 50.8%, and a pattern in which economic growth is jointly driven by consumption, investment and export export is taking shape. Guided by an innovation-oriented approach, we formulated and implemented the mid- and long-term programs for science and technology education and human resources development. National R&D spending as a percentage of GDP rose from 1.23% to 1.83%. The number of granted patents increased by 18.2 times, and enterprises have become the backbone of investment and R&D activities. We pursued economic growth by relying on the coordinated development of primary, secondary and tertiary industries. Overall agricultural productivity was enhanced. Grain output grew for eight consecutive years, and grain reserves reached a historic high of over 250 million tons. The manufacturing sector became the largest in the world. High-tech manufacturing expanded at an average rate of 22% annually and became a leading pillar industry in the economy. Value added of the service sector as a share of GDP increased by 1.6 percentage points, and modern service industries such as finance, insurance, logistics, software and information enjoyed fast development. We promoted parallel development of industrialization, urbanization, and agricultural modernization, implemented the overall strategies for development of different regions, and achieved initial success in closing the widening gaps between industry and agriculture, urban and rural areas, and among different regions. The urbanization rate rose from 39.1% to 51.3% bringing a historic change in China's urban-rural structure. Since 2008, the central, western and northeastern regions have been growing faster than the eastern region 
and the share of GDP of these regions in the national total has notably risen. A regional development pattern featuring sound interaction among regions and distinctive local features is coming into being. We conserve the resources and the environment to enhance capacity for sustainable development. To build a resource-saving and environment-friendly society was identified as an important strategy of national development. This was a major step China took in pursuing sustainable development in the past decade. We incorporated the mandatory targets of energy conservation and emission reduction into the national economic and social development plan, scaled up in financial input, accelerated the development of an industrial structure, mode of production, and consumption pattern conducive to saving energy and resources and protecting the eco-environment, and made vigorous efforts to develop green economy and promote harmony between men and nature. As a result, China's energy consumption per unit of GDP and CO2 emissions both dropped significantly. The environment and air quality standards were revised this year, and such new monitoring indicators as fine particulate matter, or PM2.5, were added. Forest cover rose from 18.21% in 2003 to 20.36% in 2011. We released and implemented the National Plan on Climate Change and played an active part in international response to climate change under the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities. We balanced economic and a social development to improve people's livelihood and promote social equity and justice. To put people's needs first was the most visible highlight in China's development in the past decade. We took improvement of people's lives as a starting point and ultimate goal of all our work and made real efforts to make development fruits shared by all. We pursued a proactive employment policy. Over 100 million new urban jobs were created in the past 10 years, including more than 10 million jobs annually for the past five consecutive years. We made free nine-year compulsory education fully available, established a complete financial aid system for students from poor families, and fulfilled our solemn commitment of not letting a single child drop out of school due to poverty. We made historic progress in building a social net safety net covering both urban and rural populations. The new rural pension scheme and the old age pension scheme for non-working urban residents achieved full coverage. And an urban and rural social aid system was basically established. The medical insurance system covering the entire population took initial shape. More than 1.3 billion urban and rural residents subscribed to the programs and the coverage of basic medical insurance programs topped 95%. We took active steps to adjust income distribution. Basic pension for enterprise retirees increased at an average annual rate of 10% for eight consecutive years. Minimum wage, threshold for personal income tax, and a national poverty line were significantly raised. The per capita urban disposable income and per capita rural net income increased at an average annual rate of 9.2% and 8.1% respectively in real terms, making the past decade one of the fastest growing periods in the history of new China. And rural income grew faster than urban income in the past two years. We earnestly implemented the UN Millennium Development Goals. China became the only country in the world 
to meet the goal of cutting its poor population by half ahead of schedule. We scaled up input in building low-income housing and raised its coverage from less than 4% in 2008 to the current 11%. Hundreds of millions of Chinese families and the towns and the villages where they live and work experienced tremendous changes in these past 10 years. And there were numerous touching stories of Chinese people changing their lives and destinies through hard work and perseverance. We deepened reform and opening up to boost the vitality and the momentum of economic and social development. China's reform made continuous breakthroughs in the past decade. This has been the most distinctive feature of our time. We accelerated the building of institutions and the mechanisms that are dynamic, efficient, open, and conducive to scientific development. We improved the public finance system, placed all extra budgetary funds under budgetary management, and made public budgets and final accounts. We unified the tax regimes for Chinese and foreign businesses, carried out a comprehensive VAT reform, and speeded up the trial program of replacing business tax with VAT. We pushed forward the pricing and tax reform to refine all products, and launched a price-based reform of resource tax on crude oil and natural gas across the country. We deepened reform in the financial sector. The shareholding reform of large state-owned commercial banks and their listing on the stock market were completed. The problem of split share structure in listed companies was smoothly resolved, and the reform of RMB exchange rate forming mechanism and reform of bank making interest rates market-based move forward steadily. Our financial system became much more competitive and resilient to risks and played an essential role in countering the international financial crisis. We deepened comprehensive rural reform, completely rescinded agriculture taxes, pressed ahead with the reform of tenure in collective forests and the launched registration for contracting pasture land in accordance with the law. We unwavering consolidated and developed the public sector of the economy, unswervingly encouraged, supported, and guided the development of the non-public sector, and ensured equal protection of property rights. All economic sectors developed side by side, and their competitiveness and overall strength more quickly improved. The deepening of reform process highly motivated the enthusiasm, initiative, and the creativity of the people, and injected a new vigor and vitality into our economic and social development. We pursued a win-win strategy of opening up, fully met our commitments made upon WTO accession, and placed equal emphasis on exports and imports, and on attracting foreign investment and investing overseas. This has not only helped us gain broader space for our development and economic growth, but also made an important contribution to economic development in the region and the world. As I look back at each and every step I took in the past 10 years, strong emotions well up inside me. They are emotions of a deep love and a strong confidence that I have always cherished towards my beloved country, a ancient civilization bringing with youth for energy. Through 10 years of hard work, we have elevated our economic and social development to a new level and laid a more solid material, technological and institutional foundation for future development. In today's China, new growth areas keep emerging. 
and strengthening. Science, technology, and education are playing a bigger role in driving economic development. There are ample supply of social funds, a better educated labor force, improved infrastructural facilities, and a sound institutional framework. There is booming businesses, improved macro regulation by the government, and a stable social and political environment. In particular, we have established a path of scientific development. All these are important factors that will make a difference for a long time to come. China is still in an important period of strategic opportunities for development. The advance of industrialization, urbanization, information technology, and agricultural modernization will continue to unleash huge development potential. And the giant ship of the Chinese economy will sail ahead fast yet steadily and reach the shore of a brighter future. Ladies and gentlemen, this year, the international political and economic situation has remained complicated and poorly and brought more difficulties to China's economic development. In line with the overall requirement of making progress while maintaining stability, we have strengthened and improved macro regulation, followed a proactive fiscal policy and a prudent monetary policy, and made our policies more forward-looking targeted and flexible. We have properly handled relations between maintaining steady and robust economic development, adjusting the economic structure, and managing inflation expectations, laid greater emphasis on stabilizing growth, and sustained steady and fast economic growth. We have intensified anticipatory adjustments and fine-tuning to respond to the new developments and problems in the economy. In particular, we have taken a host of policy measures since May. They are mainly as follows. We stepped up structural tax cuts and advanced the VAT for business tax pilot program on a priority basis. We improved the plan of the reform and extended it to more places. We took a series of measures to ease the tax burden on small and micro businesses. We gave play to the role of monetary policy in making counter-cyclical adjustments, lowered the required reserve ratio, cut the benchmark deposit and lending rates twice, widened the floating range of interest rates, lending rates in particular, and made maintained steady and moderate growth in money and credit supply. We allocated 26.8 billion yuan from the central budget to support enterprises in undertaking technological upgrading. We adopted 42 provisions of implementation for the guidelines of the State Council on encouraging and guiding the sound development of non-governmental investment, or the new 36 guidelines. We launched the program of promoting energy-efficient home appliances to the benefit of the people. We stepped up infrastructure development that concerns the people's well-being, moved faster in building low-income housing and renovating dilapidated rural houses, launched the projects of upgrading underground pipe networks and water supply and drainage facilities in some big cities, and improved the water conservancy facilities for farming. We implemented and improved the policies and measures for stabilizing exports, pushed forward trade facilitation, and actively expanded imports. We abolished and adjusted 314 administrative items that require government review and approval. All these measures have helped boost market confidence and promote steady economic growth. 
first half of this year, China's GDP grew by 7.8% year-on-year. Domestic demand remained a major force driving economic growth. The share of current account surplus of GDP dropped to 2.3%. Employment is stable. In the first seven months this year, 8.12 million new urban jobs were created, up by 5% in the first year. The agricultural situation has further improved, evidenced by increase in summer grain output for nine consecutive years. The consumer price index in China rose 1.8% over the same period of last year, and inflationary pressure has notably eased. Macroeconomic indicators show that China's economic and social development is in good shape. The speed of growth is still within the target range set at the start of the year. And although growth is slowing down, it is being more stable. As the recent measures are implemented and take effect, we expect the economy to further stabilize. We will, in light of the trend of economic performance, fully utilize the ample fiscal and monetary policy space, fully tap the huge potential of domestic demand, and fully motivate the various localities and departments. We will give greater priority to stabilizing growth, continue to follow a proactive fiscal policy and a prudent monetary policy, and maintain the continuity and stability of our policies. We will step up anticipatory adjustments and fine-tuning, press ahead with structural tax cuts, and keep the increase of money and credit supply at a steady and moderate level. We will make stronger efforts to spur consumer demand, expand effective investment, with a focus on bringing out the energy of non-governmental investment, stabilize external demand, and bolster the real economy. We are fully confident that we have the conditions and ability to overcome the difficulties on our way ahead, maintain steady and robust economic growth, and achieve development at a higher level and in better quality for a long time to come. Ladies and gentlemen, the international financial crisis has entered its fifth year. Yet, its underlying impact is still with us. Advanced and emerging economies alike are all experiencing an economic slowdown. The sovereign debt crisis in some countries continues to develop. International financial and commodity markets are undergoing greater fluctuations. Market expectations remain low, and the downward risks in the global economy are not to be underestimated. Yet, at the same time, we should recognize that major economies and international organizations are forging a broad consensus and taking focused measures to address the prominent challenges in the domestic, regional, and global economies. It is all the more important for us to boost confidence and stick together to meet the difficulties head on. I always believe that confidence provides a source of strength, and technological innovation offers a fundamental means to overcome the crisis. I believe green development is the main goal of economic transformation, and opening up and cooperation is an irreversible trend of the world. 
I hope that the international community will strengthen macroeconomic policy coordination, push forward reform of the global governance structure, resolutely oppose trade and investment protectionism, advance trade and investment liberalization and facilitation, and work jointly for an early steady recovery of the world economy. I hope that entrepreneurs of all countries will invest more in technological R&D and product innovation, vigorously develop green industries that are energy efficient and environment friendly, create new market demand and growth areas, and bring about an all-wing outcome where businesses boom, industries get stronger, the economy prospers and society progresses. Ladies and gentlemen, I have full confidence in the bright future of the Chinese economy and the world economy. Let us work closely together to disperse the shadow of the international financial crisis and ushering a brighter future. I wish the forum full success. Thank you. When Chabao, in my introductory remarks, I showed a relatively bleak picture of the world. And then listening to you, you only can be full of admiration what has been achieved in China despite the global crisis. We want to congratulate you for all those achievements. And you have shown us that policies based on harmonious scientific development address not only the economic side, but the social side, the environmental side, the institutional side of what has to be done. And so much progress has been achieved. All our congratulations. Mr. Premier, I also want to highlight the very responsible and responsive role which China has played on the international scene, cooperating with other countries to find common solutions for our global challenges. Mr. Premier, I don't want to go into specific questions which I have prepared because your speech was so comprehensive, so full of practical examples, facts of achievement. But I would like to ask you a very personal question, or actually two. Now, after 10 years, when you look back and you look forward, what is for you, personally, you said you gave your whole heart to the Chinese people, but what is for you personally, personally, the greatest achievement you are most proud of? And what is still your biggest worry for the future? Mr. Premier, please excuse if I'm very personal, but under the impression of uh, your speech, we would like to hear your opinion on those two issues. Tony Gersia, Zai Gang Tide, Kai Chang Bai Diang Chung, Wu Miao Hui Li Fu, Jia Wei, Bei Guan, the Shijie Jing Ji, the Xing Shi, Dan Shi, Ying Zai Gang Tide, Yan Jiang Dang Chung, Fei Chang Chen Mian, He Shen Ru, the Chan Shu, the Chung Guo, Ji Shi Mian Ling, Guo Ji Jin Wei Ji, the 
严峻挑战，仍然采取一系列有力的措施，成功的应对了危机带来的冲击，以及其中取得的重大成就，令我们都感到非常的鼓舞。您在演讲当中全面谈到了中国在科学发展观的指导之下所采取的一系列应对政策和措施，从经济、社会、环境、机制建设等各个方面阐述了中国在过去十年取得的重大成就。我想，我愿借此机会向您表示衷心的祝贺。在国际舞台，中国也发挥了负责任大国的作用。他与国际社会的其他国家一起共同应对国际社会所面临的挑战。今天我不想再问您过多具体的问题，因为刚才您的演讲已经从事实和论述方面全面和深入地阐述了您对中国经济发展的看法。我想向您问的问题呢，总理先生是：回顾过去十年中国走过的道路。我们都非常赞赏您全心全意为中国人民服务、奉献自己一切的这样的精神。我们想听一听，从您个人的角度而言，您怎么看去年、过去十年中国经济发展走过的路，以及您对未来中国的发展有什么样的期许？中国过去十年。一直改革开放以来，走过的道路是不平凡的。我们已经取得了很大的成绩，但是同时，我们要看到我们面前存在的困难和挑战。其中，最大的问题是。如何保持经济平稳、较快发展，不是一时，而是长期？如何进一步推进结构调整，使创新驱动成为经济发展的主要动力？如何解决收入分配差距过大的问题？真正实现社会的公平正义？如何实现经济转型？改变对资源过度消耗和对环境过度污染的状况？这些都是我们面临的问题，这需要我们继续从体制上推进改革，消除转变经济发展方式和推进经济结构调整的体制性障碍。一句话。改革开放依然是中国经济和社会发展的动力。这是一条光明的路，我们必须坚持前行，而不能后退半步。Since China launched the reform and opening up program, and in particular over the past year, 10 years, China has traveled an extraordinary journey. We have scored remarkable achievements, but at the same time, we also face a lot of uh, difficulties. We face such difficulties as how to maintain steady and robust economic growth. This is not just for the time being, it is a long-term objective. We face the difficulty of promoting structural adjustment to ensure that our economy will be mainly driven by innovation. We also face such difficulties as closing the widening income gap to ensure social equity and justice, 
and shifting China's growth model to cut our excessive consumption of resources and any damage to our environment. To overcome all these difficulties, we must press ahead with institutional reform in order to eliminate the institutional obstacles which constrain China's effort to shift its growth model and adjust its economic structure. I always believe that reform and opening up are the driving forces for China's economic and social development, and they will bring a bright future for China. We must always forge ahead. We must never fall behind. Jinho 我们的城乡地区还存在着很大的差距。看一看我们经济转型，还需要推进与生产和民生相关联的基础设施建设。我们的教育、文化、科技发展。还需要注入资金和力量已经到尽头了地铁两张照片发生在云贵交界的都进一步得到发展。我们还需要苦干十几年，甚至几十年。In my speech, I emphasized that I believe for a long time to come, China will stay at a stage with strategic opportunities for its development. Our country is a big one with 1.3 billion people. We have a strong domestic demand. There is still uneven urban, rural, and regional development. There is still much that we can do to shift China's growth model to undertake those efforts which are closely connected with growing production and improving people's livelihood. There is still ample room for us to make financial input into our education, culture, science, technology, and other social programs. All in all, I believe there is still a big potential that yet to be fully tapped 
for China's development. And I do not agree with the argument that China's growth has come to an end after 30 years of reform and opening up. Well, actually, we are at an important stage of shifting the growth model and making economic structural adjustments. And I believe there is much we can do in this regard. I was once shown two pictures by a banker of the underground pipe network and the structure of um, subways of a large European city and Beijing. I must say, there is a big difference. You may know that I have just come back from a disaster-stricken area, which is located in the border areas of Yunnan and Guizhou provinces, an area that is mainly inhabited by the poor ethnic minority Chinese people. And I find a very big gap between these areas and Chinese big cities in terms of the people's lives, their living and um, living conditions. I should say that if we can press ahead with China's urban and rural development, um, there is much we can do, and I believe it will take several, uh, a dozen and even several dozens uh, of years of hard work for us to achieve balanced development in China.城镇化农业现代化我们还有很长的路要走进一步改善城乡全体人民的生活实现社会公平正义我们面临的任务还十分艰巨实现绿色增长包容增长可持续增长我们还要付出很大的努力所有这一些都说明中国是有个巨大潜力的国家是有个巨大市场的国家我们对自己的发展充满信心 我们还要付出很大的努力, The Chinese leaders are fully aware of the difficulties and challenges that China faces. We still have a long way to go before we can fully achieve industrialization, urbanization, and agricultural modernization. We face daunting tasks in improving the livelihood of urban and rural people and achieve social equity and justice. And we still need to make tremendous efforts to enhance our green, inclusive and sustainable growth. All these show, I believe, that China is a country with enormous potential and a big domestic market. And we, the Chinese people, have full confidence in our own development. Also, 也难免挡不住下行的路子。是这样，中国面临着经济下行的压力。但是，我们相信，依靠推进结构调整和转变发展方式，更多的发挥市场配置资源的作用。有力地推动改革开放今年我们采取所有的措施都没有超出财政预算的硬约束也就是说完全都在财政预算内进行的我们之所以这样
把今年的增长速度降降低到百分之七点五，就是为了有利于结构调整和发展方式的转变。我们无论是货币，还是财政，还有充足的力量。即使财政近两个月。也有大幅的下降，啊，增速也有大幅的下降，但是到七月底，我们收支相抵，还有一万亿的余额。我们历年结余的还有一千多亿的啊稳定调节基金，我们将适时的。把它作为预调、微调的措施，以推动经济稳定增长。Some people have doubted whether the Chinese economy will stay on an upturn as the global economy goes on a downturn. It is true that the Chinese economy is under notable downward pressure. But I believe that with our effort to adjust China's economic structure and shift the growth model, with our effort to give greater play to the basic role of the market in allocating resources, and with continuous progress in China's reform and opening up endeavor, we have the ability to keep our economy in good shape. We have uh, followed a proactive fiscal policy and a prudent monetary policy. We have maintained the continuity and stability of our policies, and stepped up our anticipatory adjustments and fine-tuning. All these measures we have taken since the start of this year are within our government budget. There are no extra budgetary steps. We set a lower growth target of 7.5 percent for this year because we want to focus more energy on shifting the growth model and making structural adjustment. There is still ample space for our monetary and fiscal policies, even though our government revenues slowed down significantly. Uh, it's the growth of the government revenues slowed down significantly in the past two months. By the end of、uh, July, we still have about one trillion RMB yuan in surplus on our balance sheet of the government, and we have in place around 100 billion RMB yuan as our stability and adjustment funds, which we will、uh, not hesitate to use to undertake necessary adjustments and fine-tuning to our economic policies to ensure steady economic growth. 前八个月的经济发展与零八年、零九年金融危机有所不同的是，不是所有的企业、行业都不景气。重化工业比较困难，但轻工业相对较好。传统产业比较困难。但高新科技和服务业比较好，东部地区比较困难，但中西部地区相对较好。这就告诉我们这样两个问题：一是暴露了我们结构性的啊问题。我们需要调整结构，特别是要转变发展方式。另外一个，就是任何一个国家都不能逃脱世界整个经济形势的影响，特别是外需的减少，对我们外贸企业产生了比较大的困难。The situation of the Chinese economy in the first eight months of this year was different from the state of the Chinese economy back in 2008 and 2009. Not all companies and sectors 
have encountered severe difficulties in the first eight months of the year. During this process, the heavy and chemical industries were encountering difficulties, yet light industries were doing quite well. Traditional sectors encountered difficulties, but the high-tech and service sectors were doing well. The eastern seaboard of China had its difficulties, but the central and western region of China developed quite well. This shows that our challenges are structural in nature, and this shows the necessity for China to adjust its economic structure and shift the growth model. At the same time, I don't think any country can live free from any impact from the overall global environment. And uh, at the same time, I should admit that the Chinese export-oriented companies have indeed been seriously affected due to falling external demand. I have to add a point. It is that the foreign I should also add that non-governmental investment has also been growing by the end of uh, August. Its share in the total fixed asset investment exceeded 62%. We need to maintain faith and put the growth in a more important place to further improve the economic and we will give a greater priority to stabilizing growth. We will continue to adjust our economic structure and improve people's livelihood. We have full confidence that the target for China's economic development this year will be met. Thank you. Let me venture about. <laughs> for sharing with us also your outlook about the future of <clears throat> China. Now, if we look back at the extraordinary achievements over the last 10 years, achievements in a, at least during the last five years in a difficult global economic environment. I am sure that we are all full of confidence that you will master with the same comprehensive, intelligent policies those challenges ahead of you. Thank you, particularly also, Premier Wen, for your support of this meeting. We are very proud at the World Economic Forum, that we were able, in partnership with our Chinese friends, to establish a truly global event summit here in China of the business community with now over 80 nationalities represented here, over 80 countries. And I can promise you, Premier Wen, on the basis of this great partnership over the last six years. We will build on it, we will enlarge it, and we will make sure that together we can make a further contribution, a great contribution to the continued growth of China and to the continued development of the China people in an economic, in a social, and in an environmental context. Thank you very much. Thank 我想借此机会非常感谢长期以来您个人对于世经论坛和论坛活动本身给予的大力支持。
国际性的活动和平台。我相信今后我们会进一步加强合作，进一步扩展和深化我们已经取得的良好合作成绩。而且我们也都相信，在未来，中国和中国人民将会继续在经济和社会发展的道路上取得更多的成就。谢谢。已经四十五年了，再有几个月就要退休了。我十分珍惜这次世经论坛，非常珍惜同各国朋友、各位企业家的会面。世经论坛之所以选择中国。是因为中国是世界上人口最多的国家，是一个发展中的大国。说它古老，是因为它有悠久的文化和文明；说它年轻，是因为它正在有活力的改革和发展。面对世界金融和经济危机，各国需要相互信任、相互了解、同舟共济。世经论坛给我们各国之间企业家们相互了解。搭建了一个桥梁，编织了一条纽带。我相信，夏季达沃斯会越办越好。零七年，夏季达沃斯开始创办的时候，就把领军者作为主题。什么是领？我以为，青年、科学技术、人才和创新，我完全相信，在中国举办的世经论坛，能够起到领军者的作用，为推动世界。绿色、包容和可持续发展，贡献力量。谢谢诸位。I have devoted 45 years of my life to the service of the country, and in a few months I will retire. I dearly cherish this opportunity to come to the WEF activity and the opportunity. To have an exchange of views with friends and business people from various countries and regions, the WEF has chosen China to establish its strong presence because this is a country with a large population. It is a big developing country. It is an old country because of its time-honored civilization and culture. At the same time, it is a young country. Who is on the course of reform and opening up, brimming with energy and dynamism? In the face of global financial and economic crisis, all countries must increase mutual understanding and stick together in riding out the difficulties on the basis of greater mutual trust. In this connection, the WEF has served as a bridge and a bond, bringing together the representatives. From various countries and regions across the world, and I have full confidence that the Summer Davos Forum will achieve even greater success in the future. Back in 2007, when the Summer Davos Forum was inaugurated, it already identified itself with the new champions. Who are the new champions? Who are the representatives of the new champions? I believe they are the young people, the 
talents, the science and technology, and our innovative spirit. I fully believe that the Summer Davos Forum in China will act as the new champions and play its important role in driving global green, inclusive, and sustainable development. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Premier, and we wish you for your future all the best. Please join me in thanking again Premier Wen Chabao.